right now we have so many lovely rare beautiful roses blooming on the rooftop garden so let me show them one by one to you and roses are best photographed early morning before the sun comes on them because that's when you can see the color nicely we are going to start our October bloom rooftop rose garden presentation with Charlotte Perriand the very famous Japanese rose and you can see how it sparkles here on the back side of the petals this is an amazing feature of this rose you know it shimmers like nail polish and I have never seen something like this in any other rose and this is how you can tell that your Charlotte Perrion is an authentic one because nowadays people are um, buying these like crazy and um, they look similar to other roses except that these has this shimmer on the back side and then the center is like this it reminds of a British rose we can even say it reminds of the David Austin roses and the perfume also is a lot like the British roses but this shimmer here is very specific to Charlotte Perrion the only one in the world and now since it's autumn and cold it gave us such a full rose with many petals just like the one that you see in the posters and the pictures of Wabara Rose Farm KG who created this rose and now that the sun is gone you can see the beauty of the color of Charlotte Perrion it's such a beige pinky mustard pale with a stronger yellow here at the center and then when you turn it on the back side the sparkling shiny petals charlotte perrion open up more and it protects itself in the night it closes these petals more and then when the sun comes it opens and you can see this very elegant color that it has next October rose in our garden is rich canary that has this adorable round spherical shape and it's a flower that lasts really long and now it has many petals really full and cute and look how cute rich canary opened up such a perfect shape and they last so long it takes its time to open and to keep this shape like a globe, like a sphere of lemon yellow petals next I want to show you modern times look what a beautiful variegation it has and these sharp petals and now it gives us more petals since it's autumn and they are really long and nice so this is one of my most favorite variegated roses and here we have another modern times opening up and you know the Japanese Kobe beef? I think this rose looks very much like that, in a good sense. This variegation is so special because in such uh, long stripes. And this one does not have any perfume because actually it's really hard for roses to 
get variegation and be beautiful and also spend energy on perfume and that's why many of the florist roses do not have fragrance truly stunning this one And Modern Times is not a brand new rose, it's been around for a while. And it's here right next to Purple Tiger. Purple Tiger is a very beautiful uh, violet rose with lots of variegation. And it's so lovely to give us so many flowers right now. such a strong bush and actually the shape and color of purple tiger changes a lot in spring the flowers were kind of different they had more um, wide stripes of variegation like this one like modern times so you can also check my video of purple tiger I made a video just for this flower and one more purple tiger blooming now you can see what a wide variegation it has and the color is really dark burgundy with purple violet vibes and here is purple tiger giving us a rose with zero variegation still the shape of the petals is interesting and the color is very beautiful, almost black rose. And here is another one that's doing the job, the good job to give us variegation. And usually I'm breaking the roses at their neck when they are starting to drop the petals, like now. Basically each rose has a point along their neck where you can easily break the head off to dispose and to give the rose the feeling that it has to bloom again and again. For example, like this year, if you go with a finger along the neck, you can feel a little bump. It's hard to see with the eye, but it's here. So when you're going to break it, it will snap in that point. And so recently I'm doing this because I want to avoid to cut it with the scissors and transmit disease from one to the other so that's why I just prefer to snap them all and another one of my favorite roses the Mari Rose this is a Japanese one look at all this white on the border of the petals it is really so special I have not seen this type of coloring on any other rose usually they are let's say yellow and get red tips but this one comes like this from the start, so it's not influenced by the sun. And it's so wonderful with all these many petals with the pale pink white borders. Even the shape of the petals is so beautiful. And the leaves are also a little bit different from other roses. They are such bright color and it has many thorns. Next, we are going to observe Thierry Marx. It has such a stunning fragrance, really beautiful damask perfume. And I'm also happy that it has the classical shape that it's supposed to have with a small cup at the center and the longer outer petals like this and you can see that the back side of the petals is a bit brighter and the perfume truly amazing again Thierry marks so pretty the borders are more purple and the center is more fuchsia pink and then on the back is supposed to be brighter color like this 
very lovely British rose with wonderful fragrance. And such a shallow cup. And another really large worm at the center here. You see, it got a little bit sunburn at the tip of the petals here. So it's not because it's cold, but because of the sun. Purple roses are really easy to have problems with the sun, so they need the shade and special treatment. And next to it, we have... This one is completely red now. However, these come in different colors at the start. It's called chaleur, which means heat, and it's created by the Japanese very famous Takunori Kimura rose breeder from Rosa Orientis. And so at first, this was not so red, but it just became red with the cold temperatures. And so uh, it's a spray rose, so you will get different colors. We're gonna check on the other buds when they open because they are yellow and pink really glowing red and so full of petals it's like a sphere chaleur by takunori kimura and here is chaleur again two days later the color became more towards pink pinkish and look at this massive amount of petals and sphere shape. And meanwhile, the new bud is coral red and looks very normal. So from this, it's going to become something like this. So stunning. Here it is, the chaleur bud that opened overnight. Here it is, the chaleur bud that opened overnight. And you see how many colors are mixed in this rose? There is pink, yellow, coral red, brick red. And it is going to open more and more until it becomes a sphere. Let me show you the other one. Now you can see that it became pink, absolutely pink hot pink and this one what a color difference so that's why they are so beautiful as spray roses that from one stem you get such a nice color variation and then here is Charlotte by David Austin it's basking in the sun almost getting some burn on the tip of the petals and you can see that Charlotte has this cup, this very round shape. And it's a pale yellow, beautiful yellow color. All of them grew so tall and happy. And next one to introduce to you is Autumn Rouge. It has a stunning perfume. And this burgundy color. So the name Autumn Rouge uh, probably specifies that it's most beautiful in autumn. And it's also a Japanese rose. And the color is slightly violet. And these roses like Autumn Rouge are very easy to get some scorched. So I have to keep them here in shade. Autumn Rouge, two days later, it still has amazing perfume. So you know, it often happens with roses that have such damask strong perfume that they smell nice in the first day, first two days, but then the fragrance is fading out little by little. But this one is open now for maybe five, six days and it still smells amazing. So this Japanese rose is a really lovely, wonderful one to have in your collection, Autumn Rouge. Next to it, we have Yoni, 
another Japanese rose created by Wabara Rose Farm KG. And these are spray roses. And as they age, the color changes and becomes more purple or brown. And then we have the lovely Orfeo by Mr. Takunori Kimura of Rosa Orientis. And it has a beautiful perfume. Uh, the backside of the petals are so bright and inside hot pink. Actually, on their official picture, this one looks more purple. So I purchased it expecting the flowers to be lilac purple. But until now, it only gave us such hot pink violet roses that are also very cute. And it tends to grow such long necks and to basically look down like this. So maybe you would want to hang her somewhere in a higher place. Next to it, we have another very rare variegated rose, Bata de Cola. And you can see that the red tone is very subtle. It's almost brick red and very wavy. And then with yellow, it doesn't open up much. And the name comes from the Spanish flamenco dancer's dress. So these waves are supposed to remind you of this skirt of the Spanish dancers. Eduard Manet is another lovely rose. Now in our rooftop garden and see the beautiful variegation that it has, these pink and yellow stripes. And actually Edouard Manet is similar to Claude Monet and other roses of the painters. They are all by Delbar in France. And Edouard Manet opened up. And you can see the strong color difference. This very flashy pink and then vanilla ice cream at the center. Next to it, we have Claude Monet, which this time put out a very strange rose. It's like a new breed. It's really lilac and has this shape of the petals with a green heart. There is no variegation. And so, you know, sometimes roses are doing this. They are completely changing the style of the rose. And if you manage to cut it and breed it, and if it keeps this condition, this new color, new shape, you can declare it as your new rose. Then we have another Claude Monet that is supposed to have variegation and stripes, but it does not. Instead, it behaves like a tropical sherbet that is yellow at the center and with pink red on the border. And here is the one that is open, and here you can see some variegation. Another rare and expensive Japanese rose is Biko. This one has beautiful fragrance. There is a gradation of color from outside to the inside petals, and it's created near Fukuoka in Japan. And they are all sold so expensively. And as you can see, this one will give us a slightly different color. So that is the nice part, that you can enjoy different colors from the same rose. And it's also blooming now in October. And then Grenadine Rose is blooming. This is another very rare rose. And it was also a little bit attacked by that butterfly. Grenadine rose again, now that the worm is gone. Look how beautiful she unfolds. 
And more than looking like a peony, I think she looks like a chrysanthemum. So that's what makes her even more special than all the other Eve roses. So beautiful and interesting. Look how stunning Grenadine Rose is when it just opens. At the center it has a sphere and then these longish petals. Then here we have Shanghai Girl. And uh, the flowers became smaller than the ones it bloomed in spring and summer. And I think it is because it started to put out many, many flowers all over the place. Maybe I should have trimmed it, you know to force it to put out like strong stalks and bigger flowers but anyway it's still cute and it has the classic shape of Shanghai girl that is supposed to have these beautiful waves and then uh, orange at the center and pink to the outside then we have lady candle in blue you can see that it has a variegation that rather looks like drops so, I don't know if they call her Lady Candle, but maybe it's like a wax drops, you know? How do I get it sharp? Yes. Lady Candle opening up. What a stunning variegation. Also, look what a beautiful shape this Lady Candle has. The more it opens, so the more it opens so symmetric and elegant like a peony and you can also admire the variegation Then this very beautiful one is Chan's Zebra and if you have observed the other videos that I made of this rose, it looked very different. Now of course it has some perforation from all being eaten away by all kind of monsters, but it looks so elegant and dreamy and the color is also a little bit different. It's paler. But yeah, very lovely shape. This is supposed to have variegation, but until now it did not manage to give us any. And Chan Zebra does not have any fragrance. But a very, really lovely shape. It also gets quite sick. Next, we have a cute cherry eye that gets these freckles in autumn and a nice gradation of color. And this is a miniature rose type, so you can see that it's actually so small, but really cute. And it kind of reminds of little artist. So cute cherry eye. Actually, in Japanese, I means love, so probably the image is like love of cherry. Cherry eye opened more, and it looks like an eye indeed. Then this one is blue moonstone. Actually, nothing blue about it, except that it has a little bit lilac at the center. And maybe it's going to change in a couple of days and become darker. But this is the most beautiful flower that it put out. And also it has stunning perfume. Blue Moonstone. Created by the Japanese Kawamoto Rose Breeder. 
lady. Blue moonstone also open up more and looks like a British rose. The center is lilac, violet lilac with a little bit of pink. And it has a wonderful fragrance. Blue moonstone. And then the very beautiful smelling holly. It has a couple of roses open right now, so I want to show you how different they can look. This one is like a star with all those sharp angles of the petals. So this one is oldest, older. Then we have here, right? It looks totally different and it has this lovely gradation from petal, uh, pale petals on the outside to stronger pink in the center and then we have one more over here that is kind of in between those sharp star shaped petals and the rounded one like this here and the perfume is wonderful it's also a rare rose Biko is sister of cameo and holly and is very expensive because this um, company, Japanese company that is breeding them, is nowadays very most wanted and famous. So people are going to run and buy any roses they produce. And the specialty is the fact that they have beautiful fragrance. So they not only look beautiful, but the perfume, you can enjoy the perfume. Biko opened one more flower and it smells wonderful. And look at the cute shape that it has with these spiky petals, round like a sphere, and then the contrast to the outer petals. Then we have an abracadabra opening up, and it's so nice that it has this constant variegation. Because this one, it sometimes happens that you purchase it, and when it's starting to bloom, it's going to give you just a simple red rose. So it's nice that this one keeps enchanting us so beautiful how full of stripes it is almost black red with yellow Carajo next to it Carajo is another very rare rose with a very interesting stunning color There is this um, look of the petal, I don't know how to describe. It's not like made of paper, but something like that. Very interesting and then a nice gradation. And uh, you see that other ones are more yellow. So yeah, the red, darker color is inside here. And when it opens, it changes. See, Karaho looks so different if there is no sunshine on it. Much easier to understand how special this is. Definitely, Karaho has a very special color. And this here is Mangekyo. The Japanese rose, it kind of reminds of abracadabra, right? Except that this, the petals are wavy. So very interesting, full waves, while abracadabra has the sharp look, sharp angle of the petals. How much it looks like abracadabra, the same color tone except that the petals are wavy Japanese rose mangekyo which means kaleidoscope and mangekyo is opening little by little it takes many days to open which is good that it doesn't wilt so fast and you can see it has a green heart here at the center Then here we have Purple River. It has a very pale lilac color. Looks elegant. 
and when I saw it in a rose garden, it was actually much darker color. So I suppose it depends on its mood, what color it will produce. So these are the purple river petals that just fell down. And compared to them, Novalis is a lighter color. Also in this pale lilac elegant roses. And then we also have Couture Rose Tilia in the same color scheme. And this one is one of my favorites because of this long and very artsy type of petals with waves and ruffles. Then we have here Nagi by Wabara from Shiga Prefecture. And uh, uh, you can notice that even their rose came with such perforation from the butterfly larvae. And it's nice, it has some variegation and very interesting shape of the petals. And it's supposed to grow in many, many flowers like a spray rose. So very cute, though they are so small. And Nagi's petals became longer since I firstly filmed it, so it looks even prettier, more cute. And the color is also a little bit more established. So this is Nagi by Wabara Rose Farm Kenji. And here we have another miniature rose. And you know, miniature roses are much harder to take care of. For some reason, they get sick easily. But this one has a very lovely color. And one more miniature is Samba Cordana by Cordes. This one has a totally different shape now. It's supposed to have sharp petals in that Kenben, like sword shape, and supposed to have the borders red and inside yellow. But now it put out something totally wavy and in one color. Very funny how they decide to change the style. And it is such a problem this year. Most of the roses were attacked by this butterfly larvae. And this is because in June I was not here to apply systemic insecticide to the soil that the roses would absorb and have that insecticide in their stem. If that would be there, these butterfly larvae would not be here. I didn't have this problem last year because the butterflies would smell that uh, systemic insecticide in the rose and would not depose their eggs. But this year I wasn't here and so we have so many problems. So this is one of the many monsters that created those holes. You see this one? And the bigger these caterpillars grow, the easier it is to find them by their poo. Like this one has a lot of poo here, here. Really horrible. Look at this, totally perforated. So probably at the center, the worm is still there. Other problems that we have now is this type of black spot. Literally every day I'm picking up these leaves and throwing them away. Very annoying. And like this here, Now these are definitely eaten by slugs, not by caterpillars. You can see how it shines. The 
slime from the slug walking around. And then there are these slugs and how I'm dealing with them is I'm just wrapping them in tissue paper and throwing them overboard because at this point killing them it's maybe a pity anyway they are not on the roses so they get excused but sometimes I wonder when such a cutting dies even though it was doing fine for a while I'm wondering if it dies because of the slugs or somebody eating the roots since everything else in the same pot is doing fine so something like this also happens that you have a cutting and it's healthy for a while and then suddenly it will die another big problem that I did not have until now are these scale insects so you can see all these here on the stem of the rose are these uh, insects that are building around themselves this strong house and even if you spray insecticide it does not penetrate so these I will scrub them off and then apply a solution of neem oil and I'm scrubbing them away I'm going to use this cleaning sheet with sodium bicarbonate to wipe those scale insect houses away from the stem of the rose to kill the insect that is inside and then of course spray the soil and spray the other surrounding roses and the neem oil will prevent them from installing themselves uh, on stems of the rose this rose that has the scale insects on it does very poorly and they are all along the stem and as if the scale insects are not enough there is even a butterfly larvae eating here the young buds I'm scrapping these scales with my nails and this uh, tissue that contains actually bicarbonate and alcohol so you see how they fall off and we'll apply on top of this neem oil to make sure that any eggs cannot evolve to become again this big problem and so I'm making a mix of warm water and neem oil with a little bit soap liquid soap and we'll spray every week all the roses because if this problem has started probably it's already present in other pots where we cannot see them with the eyes yet but they are probably there so i'll add probably two teaspoons of neem oil in this warm water and a little bit liquid soap to help the neem oil be able to disperse in the water so this is here it has to be well shaken to have the oil dispersed inside and you keep on shaking it while spraying the roses with this the oil spreads really nicely so i've wiped it off it's really hard to get every little speck, every little insect and uh, this is a small plant but imagine you have this problem on a really established rose the only solution is to probably cut it away next I'm going to apply the neem oil really drench this and the surrounding soil in the neem oil so that the insects cannot recolonize it and make sure to keep shaking the oil to redistribute it evenly in the liquid otherwise uh, the oil tends to gather also make sure to spray all the surrounding roses 
because this scale is really a horrible disease. Other problems that I'm having right now is this year, the root of the rose, the wild rose, is again trying to put out its own baby and I will have to eliminate this. And so here I'm trying to make cuttings of the upper plant so that I don't need to keep the lower one that has this wild root because these wild roots are very good to sustain the plant but they will continuously want to grow their own species and not to feed the upper rows and you have to make sure to pull it out from very deep from the node basically this is the rootstock and the grafted rows starts from here so I hope to have um, this species with their own roots so that we don't need to worry about this problem. Another miniature Tutti Frutti. Actually, it was completely variegated. It was yellow with red stripes, but being here up in the sun, it became more and more red in this couple of days. But the buds, like you can see here, it's actually yellow with red variegation. This is Tutti Frutti when it opens. Actually, this one already got a little bit too red. But at least you can see that it has a lot of yellow. And so after a while, being here in the sun is going to become all red. Very cute miniature. Another very cute but very problematic miniature rose is this Lavender Cordana. So tiny, delicate, and it gets sick so easily. And then when the sun comes on the border of the petals, it becomes hot pink, more and more hot pink. So in that sense, it reminds of deep purple, the rose deep purple. But yeah, very sick puppy, although now she looks fine. Pretty lilac. It's called lavender, but actually it's more lilac. And here we have a stunning distant drums. It's a rose that uh, resembles the Julia rose, but it is even more beautiful than Julia, in my opinion. It has more petals, like this really rich. And we have this brown tone orange yellow brown at the center with pink on the outside and this distant drums has a wonderful fragrance and it's so nice that we can see the center now this one is really open and happy in the sun so pretty and wonderful fragrance. Another truly exciting rose is Exciting Mayon. Look at it! What a monster it's growing here at the center right now. And uh, from the same rose, we have this here that looks very classic and cute but yes actually these exciting mayon are supposed to grow from the center and so have new roses coming from the center in that sense this is how it's supposed to look and have these short petals here very wavy on the borders and then center with new roses blooming from here so I'm really happy to have this in the collection, to observe it, what it does. And here is Exciting Mayon, five days later. As you can see, it didn't grow too much, but at the center, here, it's growing new roses. So from here, we will have other flowers grow and bloom, which is a very interesting and alien. 
And this very elegant one is Eve number two from Kyoto Higashi no En. Really looking like a peony. And these also have nice fragrance. Really like a Chinese painting of a peony flower. And here we have bridal maple rose, so full of petals. And the outside is more green and pink at the center. Another Japanese rose that uh, received a prize at rose competition in Japan. Royal this year that is going to open soon. As you can see, the buds are quite blackish. And this one also has wonderful fragrance. And it's a Japanese rose, apparently. Here we have a Royal in bloom, and I had to change the white balance on the camera and also under lit setting to show you how lilac purple, dark purple this is. Beautiful shape and stunning perfume. And the back side of the petals is almost golden brown. That's what fascinated me when I first time saw this royale. Still, it's hard to catch this on video. I try to reduce the aperture to be able to show you the color of this. So I just changed the light to try to show you how beautiful the color of this rose is. Then we have here a splash eye that is actually supposed to look like that exciting mayon. The center is supposed to be open, so maybe it's going to show something like that to us in a couple of days. Really, at this time of the year, so many of them are suffering from this butterfly. But this is also a stunning rose. Look at the gradation from this brown at the center, brick red brown at the center to the pale vanilla ice on the outside. So let me get rid of that warm. And this Ariel is also one of my most favorite roses. It's created by uh, Junko Kawamoto. Actually, it looks pretty with these tiny holes here on the borders. And so you can see this lovely color difference from the center to the outside. Poor little thing, so many butterfly holes it has. Here is Ariel as it opened completely. And now it looks really stunning. You notice a little bit variegation and it has a gorgeous color. Hard to film, a brownish pink. Another cute miniature that we have here. This is lovely fairy. So this fairy, uh, there are in two colors. The simple fairy is brighter color, and lovely fairy has this strong pink, warm pink. And what is good about them is that they do not drop the petals, like. Sweet Chariot does, if you know Sweet Chariot, it will create a complete mess underneath as the petals fall down one by one. But this one just stays like this and dries out in this position, which is very helpful. 
lovely fairy again and actually it reminds a little bit of Nagi by Wabara so this is a cute miniature actually a very classic rose it's not like it's something new here we have another people's favorite abracadabra that was strongly damaged by these little worms and has probably a hard time opening up so sometimes you need to help them a little because they get stuck with the petals in a specific angle and cannot open so this is the poor one and then this one was lucky not to have any butterfly eggs on it another rose blooming right now is the green concussal green japanese rose look how pretty it has these flowers that are at first white and they last two three months and become greener and greener and then after a while they look like this here very interesting rose really so beautiful the green rose then we have another japanese miniature rose this one is called coffee ovation it has a very strange red dusty dark red color and even the leaves are so brownish yeah maybe brown is the correct word and coffee ovation <laughs> so for some reason it's dedicated to coffee and oh my god kanata kanata open this is one of the most wanted roses right now sometimes it goes for hundreds of dollars and you can see that there is that monster worm eating it up but it's so beautiful uh, especially since this flower managed to give us variegation on the tip of the petals so it's supposed to look like this to be this pale pink with um, vanilla color here on the border of the petals and to have this wavy artistic shape so let me get rid of that worm wow this really is such a beauty and i'm so happy that i managed to purchase one and that it displays the real character of kanata so by the way this is created by wabara rose farm kg by mr kg kunieda from shiga prefecture and it has a little bit the same attitude like andalusia here it is after the rain and now at the center you can see the worm that it's eating it but except for this the rose itself is extremely beautiful and here we have David Austin's Beatrice. Now it is autumn, so it succeeded to create a very large and beautiful flower. And as you can see, there is a gradation. The center is very strong yellow. Actually, I expected this to be more orange. But it is just a strong yellow with pale yellow on the borders. And it does have a fragrance, faint fragrance, that actually reminds me of the Japanese rose, Charlotte Berion, which could mean that uh, the Japanese rose maker had some of this British rose lineage when they created the now extremely famous Charlotte Berion. And it is quite healthy except for um, 
being like this, attacked by a blue butterfly that deposed the eggs and so small larvae were eating the bud. But luckily, it's not a major damage. There is no black spot disease and it is very healthy, really beautiful. And for your comparison, this is Beatrice and this here is Charlotte, also by David Austin. So you can see that Charlotte has a more rounder shape all in all and there is not so much color gradation like in Beatrice. Very pale lemon yellow. Constance by David Austin. Both of them very cute though. Well, it is almost orange, so really a very deep yellow. So I'm really happy that we can compare and have all this variation in our garden. With a Beatrice of Strong and then a pale yellow of Charlotte. Beatrice is very well established, has obtained her perfect shape, how it's supposed to look. And meanwhile, Constance lost her petals. Here we have another miniature rose. This one is by Wabara, rose from KG. It's called Kalin. Very lovely coral red with white center. Reminds of little artist, except that it is very bright color. It's like a poppy. have another rose by Wabara, Rose Farm KG. It's called Hiyori and yes it reminds of a British rose. It has all these many cute petals. Shallow cup and looks nice as a wedding flower. The color is pale pink with a little bit pale yellowish at the center, so there is a little bit gradation of color. Here we have a sweet chariot, very cute opening up, very hot pink, raspberry pink. And they have many flowers. The only bad part is that every single one of these petals is going to fall on your floor, on your ground, and create a mess. And so there are other varieties that do not drop the petals. Another David Austin rose is ready to bloom. This is Constance which are famous for longer outer petals in pink and then a brighter center and they are uh, also wedding roses and here she is Constance by David Austin as she opened up and you can see the center is a brighter yellowish tone and the outside pink very shallow cup and so many spiky petals like a lotus and it also has a lovely fragrance so people love to use this rose for weddings and this is another rose by Wabara it is called An and it's a gorgeous orange brownish and I will finish the video before it will be able to open fully. So please just enjoy it like this. What a lovely color gradation from outside to the center. And this rose is one of the parents of Charlotte Perriand. It's a very special rose. 
Camille managed to fight off all the worms and opened very nicely and this is sister with Biko, Pechika and Holly and also very expensive now in Japan, very sought after because it is variegated but also has a stunning fragrance Amazing how beautiful it is now since we eliminated all those many worms